Hey, we're about to get started, but first we wanted to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Happy Hour, like our Facebook page at Happy Hour with Joby and Curtis, and follow us on Instagram at Happy Hour underscore IG. It's Corona time. Hey, it's Corona time right now. It's Corona time. Absolute rain. Drug addiction. Uh, uh, now, more than ever, it's it is important to remember the true meaning of Happy Hour again. Your life might just do. It's Corona time. Ready? Apple. <laughs> and it's Happy Hour again. Hey, everyone. Let's start this all over one more time. At the top left, there's Jason. I'm Curtis. And there's Joby. Hey. As we were saying just a moment ago, it's been a week of Mondays, and now I'm, <laughs> I turn I turn your guys' volume on, and then I forget to turn my my mic back on. So, cheers yeah. to everyone! Cheers to everyone, it's a and rough again, start. As you mentioned previously, for those listeners who didn't hear it, you can always go back and watch our shows. We got our YouTube channel going. We're on Facebook. We got Instagram. Sometimes those things don't all play nice, but for the most part, we're on the major platforms. So go back and watch some of our old shows and enjoy tonight's show because we're getting back on track. Right. And, and true to our, um, our broadcasting expertise, we open with a short bit to get all the kinks worked out. Right, guys? Right. Make oh, yeah, sure that we got uh, everything going. Everything's uh, kicked. We don't want anything interrupting our special guests tonight when they come on at 8 o'clock. So. We got the cobwebs cleaned up. So as we're saying this, and I'm seeing um, – Joby, did you shave your head, Joby? Yes, I did, and oh. uh, I, I'm loving it. I think I'm going to rock it for the rest <laughs> of the year. <laughs> it's, uh, a tough- it's, it's a throwback, definitely, to a, a, a days gone by, days yeah. of yore. Yeah, it's a, but, it's a, uh, yeah. it's a tough it. one to go, to go into and then come back out of. Yeah, so I, did the, I, did, I started doing it myself, and I did the half. And then I regretted not doing the mohawk just to mess around. Um, but it was too late. It was like a half. Anyway, yeah, uh, I feel bad for my barber who's technically not working right now anyways, David. Uh, but I think I'm going to rock this for a while and just do it myself. Mm-hmm. I did have some help. I did have some help from the, from the girlfriend. So. Did the girls get in? Did they all get a little clipper trim? Yeah, no, nah, that was – I mean, yeah. It's, and then uh, – <laughs> So I thought I had enough juice in my cordless clippers and they ran out. <laughs> that was not fun. So I just wore a hat and it came back to it at nighttime. It was perfect. <laughs> There's always a way around. It, it's not easy. I mean, it's not easy. Yeah, especially with the blending. I, I took my sides and back down today too, Curtis. And next week I may just be bald because <laughs> trying to get that little, I was starting to look like a Q tip. It was all round. Mm-hmm. And after only one week, I was already mad about my haircut that I gave myself last week. So I, like yeah. Joby was saying, it's like you got to make sure the trimmers are all fully charged. You got to make sure the mirrors, you know, has no water spots on it. It's got to be all just right in order to get some level of accuracy. The, the trimmers are deceiving. They don't, there's no warning. It's just bam, I'm off. And it's just like, start cutting hair. <laughs> and are you using like full on hair? No, uh, it's like a small, yeah. I have a full on, I couldn't find my full on. Those are the things that are made for that, man. My, I'm using uh, the trimmer too, and every now and then I get a little thicker area of hair, and it's like, yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's like taking the mower through too long of a drug. <laughs> it's it's been two weeks and you're trying to push them over through it i was supposed to have uh i was supposed to have what do you call it uh protest uh protest beard but i lasted like five weeks and that's it it was done protest hair and protest beard but uh like a mild protest not not like the protest that i sent you guys earlier <laughs> <laughs> it was great not the, y- not, the y- not the ymc yeah hair i hope protest. you found a humor in that <laughs> I'm, i was telling curtis you know if he's listening you know uh, Please accept my apologies if you're offended. But at first, I thought you were sending it, Joby, because the guy reminded me of Kevin Pratt. Let me see. <laughs> you look at him. I did not even think about that. There's something in his face that looked like Kevin. I was like, holy shit, is he at a pro? Like, is he at a rally? I just really enjoyed that. Dude. It was a, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Trump MAGA oh, rally. It was a Trump rally, but the song, the song is perfect because they're trying to make it into MAGA, but it's actually, like, you guys know what this song is, right? You guys know who's saying this. <laughs> great but yeah anyway yeah uh what what are we on what week 
Seven, six, eight, nine, twelve. Somewhere between six and eight. Okay, this is this is our sixth show. So um, uh, I think we started a week afterwards, maybe two weeks afterwards. So we could be eight, as far as eight. Yeah. It's all running together at this point. <laughs> I have, I keep like I wake up in the middle of the night picturing the view of my windows from daytime because that's all I'm seeing right now. It's just that little corner of my apartment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did go for a walk today. I thought about walking all the way down to Ventura Spirits, um, who's going to be our guest today. And I realized it was 3.3 miles there, like with an estimate of a little over an hour, which means I had to come back that same distance in the same time. And I thought, that's, that's more exercise than I really was bargaining for right now. <laughs> Long walk. That's a lot of time that I had to give up. Right. Yeah. Well, I got on the bike trail. I made it to, uh, I made it to Stanley and then I was like, I think I'm gonna go back. I don't. I don't want to go too far on the first day. But it was uh, that Stanley crossing. I'm like, if I cross, then I'm going for it for a while. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll just turn around, and Stanley. But yeah, it's uh, interesting. Interesting times on the bike path today. People are definitely out. It was uh, all kinds of characters out. So it was, it was cool. uh, what's going on, Curtis? For you down in the on campus? Because I know Saturday was like the first day after Ventura announced a soft opening or limited access opening to the parks. But like Joby's saying, the promenade and the beach were full. People were sunbathing already. It was all kinds of weaving up and down the bike path in order to avoid people. Are you seeing activity on campus down in uh, CCC? Um, no, there's nothing here. It is all, <clears throat> everything is closed down. There's no students, there's no faculty. There's, there's um, skeleton crew for, for staff. You so feel there's, down there. there's, yeah, it's quiet. It's, you know, we go out for a run and, and we may see three people and then um, maybe three cars on top of it as we're making loops around our neighborhood. You know, there's nothing out here. That's for sure. Yeah, I was, I, um, I, I try not to second guess executives because my wife who is an executive here at Channel Islands and, and I know the thoughts that they, that go into this, but really, Ventura being the only county to open up in between two counties that are closed. I was just a recipe for everyone. And I was listening, actually somebody across the street, I could, they were so pissed off that I could hear them across the street in my house. They were so pissed off that, that, that when they went to County line, that everybody from LA was at County line. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, this was this, this whole slow opening kind of thing is not going to work, especially on the hottest weekend of the year so far. Yeah, it's not definitely happen, hot. And then eventually they're gonna just close it down again because people can't control right. it. Yeah. So what did, what did you guys drink on this hottest, what was your thirst quencher for the, for the weekend? Oh, what did I have? Oh, I ended up actually, I, I got- It was hot, Friday was probably the <clears> hottest day of you know, in all honesty, although this is a typically a beverage focused show, adult beverage focus, I went with a nice grapefruit Pellegrino in a can. I just crushed the hell out of that thing. It was mm -hmm. bubbly. It was <clears throat> refreshing. Well, one of the things that I do is behind me in all of these episodes is my kegerator. But one of those taps, well, there's hardly ever any beer in it anymore. But one of the taps is always dedicated to I make up. Uh, um, lemon lime water and I just carbonated so it's just sparkling water so we go through 15 gallons of sparkling water a month probably just keep on you know just I make three up three gallons or three kegs of it and then just let it sit and carbonate and and so on the hot days that's what's going on but I ended up getting a shipment from Casa Agria so I picked up the double IPA one of their IPAs and then um, their Schwartz beer and that's been kind of my go-to's here for the last couple of days. Well, we're going to talk about it a little bit more uh, in just a few minutes after our break. But today, in preparation for the show, I was like, shit, like, I'm going to be such a bad host if I don't have anything to display from our special guest brand. And out of the blue, after we decided that they were going to be able to come on, I had this taste for brandy. And they've got, a, so we're talking about Ventura Spirits coming up. They've got a great strawberry brandy, but they also have a limoncello. So I'm looking to throw some limoncello over ice here in the next couple of days when it's really toasty and get a little yeah, fresh. That bad boy in the freezer, man. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like that in the freezer. Yeah, <clears throat> that's, it, that's it. The true Italians keep the limoncello in the freezer and you just bust it out. You don't need the ice or anything. We're going to get down with Andrew. Yeah, uh, don't freeze because you got enough alcohol. It should be enough alcohol. In there. We'll find out if Andrew uh, <laughs> just just see, in that slushy direction or any kind of infusions. It won't, it, won't, it won't get slushy. Let's see. We'll find out what he says. But yeah. 
uh, through my uh, meeting with Jason, I did, was able to score a nice, cute little ball over the wild again. I love this stuff already, so it was nice to get it. Curtis, have you had this? I have not. Uh, was, we were trying to figure out a way to drone it over to your house <laughs> or drop it off because I knew you would like to. Uh, that little drone you bought for me a, a few years back. Oh, yeah. Will that carry a bottle? Will they make it out of there? I think, unfortunately, it doesn't have the horsepower to carry the glass bottle. Uh, man. Sorry. Well, um, what are you guys drinking right now? Let's see what you guys have. Well, I told you I was going to go brandy, but I figured that was a good, like, with the guest sipping kind of drink. So with dinner and to prep for the first segment, I'm doing a uh, Alvarado Golden Getaway. It's their pale ale. It's got a really nice dinky hop kind of direction, but not being overpowering like an IPA. Nice. Mr. Curtis, what do you got? I've got the Ambient Fields right now from uh, Casa Agria. Double IPA. It is juicy. <laughs> it That's a very, um, bougie way of pronouncing some of your British. <laughs> <It's laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> it must be the driving cap. Is it the driving cap? It is right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out what you're making fun of because the name of the beer is Ambient Fields. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's <laughs> tomato tomato. It's tomato tomato. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh! I'm sorry. Yes, I, I am very. It's a tomato, tomato. Mm -hmm. tomato, yeah, tomato. I, I grew up, it may be just be that Midwest twang, but it's ambient. Ambient fields. <laughs> ambient. Yeah, I, I try to, I try to um, jazz things up just for this podcast. Otherwise, otherwise it's, it's pop and um, South Dakota and okay. those kinds of, right. Yeah. It's, my, my Midwest accent does come out every once in a while. So I'm definitely having some uh, first world problems tonight. Uh, <laughs> I have no ice. So I'm looking at this gin and I'm like, I don't have any ice. Uh, one of the benefits of your refrigerator breaking is you got to take beer out of your beer cooler so you can put food for the family in it. <laughs> um, priorities, right? Uh, but this old jam is tasting actually really good. This is Phantom Carriage. Uh, it's a 2016 Wild Golden Ale, aged in wine barrels, and it's still carbonated. Still tastes delicious. Nice. Um, I'm actually kind of glad that I opened it. It takes the, the refrigerator breaking. So my, um, yeah, my, my gin and tonic is, may not happen. It's going to be a warm, I've never had a warm gin and tonic. I don't know about that. Ah. Yeah. 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 I'm not a fan. Yeah. So but the good thing is I ordered the $10 part and it's going to be here tomorrow. It's my years of restaurant experience. I'm like, this has got to be some BS part. Looked up the error code. Uh, okay, cool. It's 10 bucks in a beer. Always the cheapest plastic piece, isn't it? The cheapest thing makes the thing go down, yes. Yeah, because everybody in the house wanted a new fridge already, but I was like, well, this is, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be the easiest thing to come by. Right let's, just wait, let's just check the error code first. It's giving us an error code. It's telling us what's wrong. It's nice. Yeah. So. Well, that's a, that, that, if you have a, a refrigerator that's giving you an error code, that's way ahead. That's way newer than um, what I've got. The like, error code doesn't just appear. You have to get in there and hit a bunch of stuff to get the error code. But the magic of YouTube. <laughs> you, you have, have, have to have a readout of some sort, which my no, refrigerator it's the, same, uh, it's the same readout that tells you the, the ice. Whether yeah, it's crushed or if you go and you open the back of Curtis's refrigerator, there is still a hamster on a wheel. Yeah, well, that I, we're talking about the keg thing, though. Yeah, yeah well, uh, advanced. We're talking more about his regular keg reader. That's you got to keep that thing. Look, like, I'd rather go old school, considering our the fridge broke and it's you know semi new. It's not even new, but whatever. <laughs> the point is, I'm in a first world. Uh, but yesterday, so it broke on Saturday. But yesterday, I made the uh, Jason. I don't know if you remember the ghetto cooler, which is the the milk crate with the plastic bag. My oh, favorite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I made a little ghetto cooler, got some bottles, filled up some beer, filled up some margarita mix, and then brought it home. We had a good old time. We've there. done those a few times at different events. Yeah, it's the, the ghetto cooler, my favorite. It works. Can we take a uh, quick break, Curtis? And I think so. I was just looking at, I pulled up uh, Ventura Spirit Company. Um, so if you go to VenturaSpirits.com before we head into the segment, take a look at their samples, their shop, um, and all the things that they've got going. Uh, it would be a great way to get in the mood for um, Andrew. I see he's in our waiting room right now. So uh, we're going to take just a quick break. We'll come back with Andrew and uh, with refreshed drinks, I guess, right? Got it. That's what Thanks for listening to Happy Hour. We'll be right back. Happy hour again. I was just looking at your website. There's like a prickly pear. Is that like a prickly pear margarita? 
or just kind of like a the uh oh. the the apuntia yeah well, yeah so, apuntia, right? so think uh it's it's not a cocktail it's not sweet it's it's a spirit that's actually distilled from cactus fruit um so it, it's it's very at home with uh, agave spirits uh yeah. gets mixed in, in margarita type cocktails jason okay. you got one of those huh yeah oh yeah oh cool all right. Well, welcome back to Happy Hour, everyone. As you can, as you're joining in a conversation here, we have Henry Tarmy and Andrew Casberry from Ventura um, Ventura Spirits Company. Uh, thank you so much, you two, for joining us today. It's been it's great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for having us, guys. Our pleasure. You bet. So this show, we've just been um, we the 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 idea of having spirits on a happy hour show is not far fetched by any means and and then also to have one that's so close to us and local which is is great and then also the fact that in this we in these weird times right now that that you shifted just a little bit to um to sanitizer and offering um, a different kind of product all the whole way through. So for those of you who are watching um, right now and listening on the podcast later on, make sure you go to VenturaSpirits.com. Um, take a look at their whole catalog of, of cocktails, um, spirits that they offer, the cocktail recipes they have, um, and learn a little bit more about it. But, um, you know, first of all, um, let's start with uh, I think just the conversation of how long you've been in operation in Ventura. Andrew, you want to take yeah, that? <clears throat> sure. I'll take this one. Yeah. Well, um, the, this, the, the, the seed for Ventura spirits as a business started out, um, at, you know, we started out as hobbyists first and, uh, my brother Anthony and I have, have been distilling for fun. Um, probably for, I don't know, I guess I've been, I've been saying 15 years for five years, so it's been a while. <laughs> um, and the Ventura Spirits was incorporated and founded and finally, you know, consummated, I guess, uh, as a business, probably in 2010, 2011. Um, we have been, and Henry might, might check my numbers here, but we have been uh, at our physical location on Ventura Avenue for probably six or seven years. We've been selling bottles into the market for five, maybe six years. Um, okay. And um, yeah. 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 So, and so just to give a li little bit more background, uh, when, when Andrew says uh, 20 years, you might not know how old he is, but I think you were maybe 14, right? When you guys <laughs> built your first still. Uh, yeah, but about right. Um, and I, I think it was because their dad had a, a bad batch of wine or something like that that he was trying to make. And uh, Andrew and Anthony, I mean, Andrew is now a, a, um, a licensed engineer and his brother, is a, Anthony, is an industrial designer. So they've always been kind of mechanically inclined. And I think it seemed like kind of something interesting to mess around with. Um, so that was the that was the seed. And they, they kind of stayed at it. I met Andrew in college, uh, become a, became a shared interest um, and kind of kind of went from there. Well, if they were making any uh, level of quality back then, it makes sense why you became a shared interest because um, one of the things that I went to the distillery for specifically today was I had a taste for brandy all of a sudden. I was telling the co-host in the opening segment that when we were going to have you on, I've experienced you guys through Barrel House 101 and I've you know, had product before, but I looked in the cupboard and there wasn't any Ventura spirits left over in my cupboard. So I'm like, I got to restock in preparation for the show. And the strawberry brandy was something that just hit my, my palate. I just wanted to, I don't know, I just had a taste for it tonight. I've been drinking beer and drinking, uh, you know, some gin and stuff over the past handful of shows. And I needed something different. This thing is super aromatic and, and delicious right now. This reminds nice. me of driving through Oxnard, so I appreciate that. But can you, what kind of products were coming off of the still early on before you guys really got your foot in the community? Well, I can, I can tell you that um, we were actually not making anything good uh, for a long time. <laughs> I think we, we, we got Henry excited about the idea um, before we got him excited about what we were actually making. It was, yeah, it started out very just kind of fun and, and, you know, garage, scrappy, optionistic. We would uh, occasionally um, recover the, you know, like, the leftover leftovers from kegs following a high school party. Um, 
you know, like the next day they set it all night and like the next day it's, 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 you know, still half full, but nobody wants it. And so we distilled some of that. Uh, we distilled some of that crappy white wine that my dad tried to make. Um, we, the prickly pear brandy is something we, we made, uh, just as, as an experiment a long time ago, because, you know, it was like, neither of us had any income at the time. And we we're like, well, let's see, you need sugar and, you know, you need sugar to produce ethanol. And we had been spent our childhood driving through the Camarillo Grand on the 101. And one summer it was like, oh, wait, look at all that fruit. I wonder if you can use that. So the prickly pear brandy was something we actually made, um, have been making for a very long time. And it just, as we developed the ideas around, you know, what we could offer to the world of distilled spirits, being self-taught, uh, sort of hobbyist amateurs, um, it, it became apparent that, you know, really that that was the idea. That was what Ventura Spirits could do better than anybody else and do differently was to take things like cactus fruit, um, you know, just take a kind of a, a fresh approach to what we can make and, and should make. And, and yeah, jo you know, uh, Jason, what you're tasting in the strawberry brandy is an extension of that. It's you know, there aren't many people around the world who have the opportunity to or, or even the interest in trying to make an aged strawberry brandy. But being in Ventura, it's obvious why we would try to. And I think the result, you know, kind of confirms our what, what we are uh, what we are thinking, which is that, you know, it, it should be made. And, and there's a reason why you why people, you know, should make strawberry brandy and we want to drink strawberry brandy. The, yeah. the fact that we don't the fact that there's not a lot of it out there is not an indication that it sh that it, sh it shouldn't be something that is, is you know, enjoyed and, and produced. Well, I know a particular restaurant owner who may have some beer that will need a home, but can't yeah. actually pour off draft at some point. So I, I may have emailed, I may have emailed somebody on a general email. <laughs> I, that's actually, so, so can you guys explain to us um, what at its core, what brandy, what, what brandy is? Cause you think of brandy and, Think of cognac and think of grapes, but when you're saying strawberry brandy, what makes a brandy a brandy? Is there a specification? Yeah, so so in the the broadest sense of the term, brandy, uh, it means that it's it's distilled from fermented fruit, uh, from from some sort of fruit wine. Mm. Uh, so almost you know 98% of the time when you say brandy and you're not modifying the term, you are talking about a grape spirit, okay. cognac, armagnac. Uh, etc. These, these are all these all start out as some sort of grape wine that then gets distilled and aged. Um, but if you're talking about anything that's distilled from fruit, it's likely going to be some kind of brandy. So an eau de vie or an apple jack, um, etc. Th those all count as, as brandy as well. Um, and there, there are some strong European traditions, um, sort of farm distilling traditions, uh, where you'll have a clear brandy called an eau de vie, a water of life. And the whole idea is to faithfully communicate the character of whatever fruit you're starting with, whether it be raspberries or stone fruit or whatever it is. Um, and that's definitely the approach that we took with, with, with this, this strawberry brandy is to try to get as much strawberry through as possible. There's a um, lot in there too, in terms of like, have you guys had smell of vision I know, this is enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, it's, it's an interesting one because sometimes people will see strawberry brandy on the label and they'll assume, oh, it's a liqueur, like it's, like it's sweetened or it's flavored with strawberries or something. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's I don't strong. Think it's a syrupy sweetness at all, but it's got a beautiful um, like expression of strawberries. So you can smell the sweetness, even though it's not like a syrupy direction or an artificial strawberry. And there's a finishing breath of fresh strawberry. Right. Man, you're, you're hired. Jason's <laughs> <He's> uh, <laughs> got a new gig. <laughs> so I, I remember you guys had a, and, and I'm sorry if I'm telling you, you know, tales out of school, as they say, but I remember you guys had a strawberry vodka that wasn't actually strawberry flavor. So for what was the story about, I mean, like I said, correct me if I'm saying something wrong, but no, no, there, no. Yeah, no. some strawberry jam that was, uh, that you guys got a hold of. It, awesome. ex exactly. So as, as Andrew was saying, you know, what started out as not a, not a very deliberate approach to distilling, you know, has slowly coalesced into sort of a point of view. And, you know, one of the things that we try to do is to make stuff that's, that's from here or to think about, okay, you know, as a distiller here, what does it make sense to distill that, you know, is, it could become sort of a regional spirit or sort of communicate something about the place where we are, you know, which of course, if you go back far enough is how, all different types of spirits came about. You know, people used what they had. Right. And so 
obviously we're in a big strawberry producing region um, and there's a ton of waste uh, along the way in the field at the packing house in the cold storage warehouse um, and a distiller is really well positioned uh, to kind of sit there at the en end of that agricultural chain and take stuff that might uh, be overripe or whatever it is for some reason go to waste otherwise and so yeah this this was a whole bunch of strawberries that had been cleaned and processed and packed and frozen um, and was going to be on its way most likely to being uh, preserves or you know strawberry smoothies or something like that and through a, a, a funny chain of events basically became a liability became waste for the for the producer or for the the previous owners and so we stepped in and said sure uh, uh you know we'll, we'll take that off your hands and that sort of started us down this down this road it was really a happy accident and um yeah, like you're saying, we, we did start off uh, making vodka with it. Um, right. And but yeah, it wasn't was, flavored, right? It wasn't strawberry flavored. So. No, just like the brandy isn't, you know, all the flavor that was that was in there was flavor that was in the fruit that carried through the fermentation and through the distillation uh, and, and into the final product. Um, and so vodka can actually be made from anything. Uh, what makes a vodka a vodka is the proof to which you distill it. So whether you're starting with pears or potatoes or wheat or corn or strawberries, if you're fermenting it into some sort of distiller's wine or beer, and if you distill it to above 95% alcohol, then you, you have a vodka on your hand, you know, a high, a high proof vodka that then gets diluted down to go into the bottle. Um, and that works great for us, or so we thought, just because uh, we, we kind of, we just weren't that interested in vodka because vodka is by definition a neutral spirit without much character to it. And so the thinking was, wait, why would we as small distillers who are interested in using stuff from the area make a product that is by definition more or less devoid of character? How do we fit in there? You know, how do we contribute something to the world of spirits by doing that? And so when the strawberries came across our radar, we were like, oh, all right, you know, this is a way to do it and, and kind of from an interesting perspective and, and yeah, it, it sounded good to us. Okay. Um, so yes, we, we started out making a, a vodka from strawberries. With that being said, with that perception and that take on vodka, you do have a vodka in the lineup. Yeah. You've got the haymakers. Yeah. What was your intent there? What are you, what's your um, focus and achievement for haymakers then as a base vodka? So, uh, so uh, I'll just give you a little bit of background. Basically, um, because of loopholes and fire code, we started uh, aging our, our vodka or, or storing our vodka rather in, in oak barrels, in oak casks, because those didn't count towards our, our maximum allowable storage quantity, uh, thanks to the whiskey lobby, I guess, <laughs> um, which doesn't make all that much sense, right? But that, that was the truth. And so um, on, its, on its way to becoming vodka, uh, we had what, what started out as brandy, right? It hadn't been distilled to vodka strength. It was unaged strawberry brandy. Uh, and in a roundabout way, we realized, oh, this stuff is really interesting. Uh, and we thought maybe a higher and better use for our strawberries than distilling it all the way to neutrality for, for the vodka, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, and so that, so what, what we were taking for our vodka be, got redirected and went entirely towards our brandy program. Um, we'd also learned a few things uh, while we were, you know, through that initial strawberry vodka product, which was that it was a little bit too wacky. Uh, we, we weren't filtering it out at all, and so it did retain a little bit of strawberry character, which was interesting, but it was also like we wanted it to be vodka. Like you could make a savory cocktail or a sweet cocktail or kind of do whatever you wanted without us having to be like, well, it's distilled from strawberries and it's got a little bit of strawberry flavor. You know, it was too complicated, too much to have to explain. And so the Haymakers vodka is made from 50% potatoes um, and 50% apples from the Kuyama Valley. And the idea is to take kind of the best, or at least in our opinion, the best of the strawberry vodka in terms of having an unusual set of inputs and a little bit of flavor, but not have it be so out there that you can't use it as a kind of a utility all around vodka. And that, that uh, is where the apples come in then? You're looking at just a little bit of uniqueness and nuance from the sweetness of the apple? What, exactly. Are you, are you able to disclose what variety of apple you're using from Kiyama? Yeah, yeah, they're-, they're uh, Not a trade secret? <laughs> no, no, uh, Pink Ladies. All right. Yep. All right. right, Andrew? Yeah, Pink Ladies and, and some Fujis as well. All right. Curtis, yeah. I don't know why I always want to gravitate towards you and artwork. Might be your 
Master of Fine Arts. It also might be the fact that I've got some of your pieces in my apartment from your uh, artistry days. But um, I was hoping that Henry and Andrew, you could talk with us a little bit about the origins of the logo and where you know the, the bird and the flower, what some of the representation is there and how that helps shape your identity. Andrew, you want yeah, this well, one? Sure, yeah, we, it's funny. We operated for five years probably without a, a logo for our company. And um, we, the seagull had featured very prominently in, a, in the sort of goofy early attempts that we had made to, to def, you know, uh, define the brand in, in terms of graphical elements. Um, we, you, you see a lot of birds actually pop up in, in distilled spirits, especially craft distilleries. I'm not sure why that is, but we thought animals were cool. We, we thought the seagull was cool and represented in Ventura in a, in a nice way. Obviously, people truly hate that bird uh, <laughs> in, many, in, in many contexts. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is fairly fitting, I think, as a symbol of Ventura because they're ubiquitous and also, um, you know, just more, je more broadly speaking for Ventura spirits because they're scrappy, they will, they're survivors. They're foragers. They scaven, yeah, they're foragers, you know, and so we, we thought it would be kind of funny to embrace uh, a, a bird like the seagull uh, as our sort of mascot or symbol. Um, and we, the reason it took us five years in order to get that artwork is because we, um, you know the, the label art that you see on the on the the bottles um, mostly it started out from from one of two artists and uh, both of them were were local one in LA one one uh, Henry literally met at a coffee shop in Ohio one morning um, so it would always it was always important to us to you know kind of ma manifest the broader ideas that we all had about you know the importance of art and aesthetic and you know keeping things as local as possible. You know, we wanted that all to to play out on the labels, which is why they're they're so colorful and playful. Um, it, we it was always tough for us to try and distill the brand down into a single logo, but finally, um, after several years, we we hired some true professional alcohol packaging designers, and they nailed it. So we're I, at least I, I I think I can speak for our whole team. We're we're pretty pretty thrilled with how they did on the seagull logo there. Um, is that a California yeah. poppy in its mouth on your main page? It is. It is. Which, you know, I, we were like, oh, is that too much? You know, but no, I think it works. I think it's great. The packaging is awesome. I'm going to put it behind me. Um, if you go on uh, Ventura Spirits, is it VenturaSpirits.com? There's some great, there's some great um, artwork and great, and you can shop right online. Is that what you did earlier, Jason? That is correct. That's what I did earlier is I uh, shopped online and picked up at the distillery mask on uh, hand sanitizer as I exited the vehicle. And then, which we're going to get into next, and Curtis, I didn't mean to cut you off, but we're going to talk about the new endeavor right now during COVID-19, and that's the making of hand sanitizer. There was a bottle in my package. So, you know, I was very appreciative of the fact that I walked out with booze and I walked out with safety. <laughs> It's a it's a full it's a one stop shop convenience yeah. and and um, making sure that everyone stays healthy inside and out right yeah. this I don't I don't think I don't think this was the the the, the sanitizer or the um, disinfectant that everyone oh, wow. was talking about earlier this week but so one of the things there was this really interesting thread going through so you're talking about you know this this uh, your um, evolution of strawberries and, and, and you want this local and this local fruit and everything else. And so one of the things that I'm looking at and then the, the packaging, the labels and, and all of these things that are, are, you know, these sort of iconic Ventura County um, 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 ideals, things, topics, so that sort of thing. In your whole lineup, the one thing that I think screams, what can you do with local ingredients is a gin and so can you talk about what kind of local ingredients that you um <laughs> the the zoom nice. is uh the, the green yeah, screen nice. is playing right, through right, the the right, zoom right. label there but um but what um you know 
<laughs> excuse me, whenever I think of going in and trying gins everywhere else, everyone is, oh, we've got the sage in our backyard, or it was the lavender from this, or wherever it was. So can you talk to us a little bit about, um, just, just describe the gin and your process through that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so so I, I think you're exactly right. Uh, gin is extremely well suited to being a, a local or regional spirit and you know saying something about a place. The one uh, hard and fast rule about gin is that it needs to be made with a juniper berry. Uh, and that's literally it, more or less. It needs to be characterized by the flavor of juniper. Beyond that, it can be made from any base, base spirit, base alcohol, and you can use any sort of cast of supporting flavor profile. So your classic London dry gin is gonna be very juniper forward with some coriander and, and a, a couple other things in there, but it doesn't need to be that way. And so you see stuff like Hendrix or the Botanist uh, where, where they're taking the flavor in, in, in different directions. Um, and so that's, that's definitely what we're doing with, with Wilder Gin. We've got plenty of juniper. It's the largest uh, single ingredient by far. Uh, but beyond that, we're using a whole bunch of native California botanicals. And the basic idea is try to get the sensory experience of a hike up in the hills into the bottle uh, in, you know, in the most harmonious way possible. Um, and so the way we set about doing that was we literally picked as many different native herbs as we knew about and knew we had access to. Um, and we distilled them all individually so we could understand what the flavor was like coming through the hill. And we could literally take uh, droppers and mix them in dozens of different iterations and ratios and figure out what played well together and what, uh, you know, kind of brought out the flavors that we, we thought we were, we were shooting for. There's two, there's two items on that list that um, one of them I can't even pronounce. I'm not going to try. Yeah. Uh, but to what you're saying, Yerba Santa. Yep. Yeah. How do you say the, the word that starts with CH? Oh, Tutupate, or also known as, as Osha root. Okay. Um, which is actually, which doesn't actually come, come from here. I mean, it does grow in California, but that's one that we're not actually foraging locally um, just because of availability. But yeah, the, the Yerba Santa, the California sagebrush, the California bay. Uh, we also use Ojai Picti Tangerines uh, from Churchill Orchard up in, up in Ojai. A lot of those herbs are exactly what you're brushing past, you know, going hiking in, in Ojai or, or pretty much up and down the central coast. Um, so there's definitely some familiar scents in there for sure. Yeah. And Henry, is this, I mean, Andrew and Henry, what are your favorite, your favorite babies that you guys make? Is gin, is no. gin one of yours? I think I think that um, the way I think about about the gin versus the, the fruit brandies is that, or, or or even most of the things that we make, it's like okay, the gin. Other than having to use juniper berries, um, you know, given our intention to 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 make it be what it is, there was a lot more thought and work and effort and and general, you know, trying in order to make it what it is. So I feel like I have. I, I, maybe I'm proudest of the gin just because we we set out to do something and had to had to execute. Whereas, you know, in a lot of ways, the other the other ones, um, the the fruit brandies, I guess in particular, but even the limoncello, you know, we're almost like trying to do our best just to not screw it up. You know what I mean? You, you start with fresh strawberries. Yeah, just like let let it be as awesome an expression of fresh local strawberries as you possibly can and don't screw it up or you know something like that so for me um the the apuntia has a soft spot that, for that one just because we've been you know playing around with, with it for so long and it's it it i think it really helped us coalesce around the idea of uh, the big ideas behind ventura spirits at an early stage to have something tangible that we had already made that was so out there and tasted so different differently than what most people would, would expect. Um, so I think that that helped us gain momentum to have this prickly pear stuff in hand and say, you know, like we keep coming back to it. It's, it's really crazy and it tastes funky, but like maybe this is what we should be doing. So I guess I'm split between the Apuntia and the, and the gin. I, I really enjoy drinking both of them though. So nice. what, 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 about the, what about the Paloma? <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Well, is the, Paloma, is the Paloma your uh, your agave spirit? Or? Yeah, that, I mean that that's a new one. It, and it's we were just on our third batch, um, and it's it's not unlike the other stuff we're talking about. It's not available, you know, at, at bars and restaurants around around the state. It was actually it's just, a limited release, wasn't it, Henry? 
Yeah, yeah, it's just just available out of the distillery for now as we're we're figuring it out and ramping it up yeah. and that sort of stuff. But it's for me, it's it's a it's a really fun one because as as you guys know, it's you can't call it tequila. It, it doesn't come from Mexico, uh, but that's also what makes it interesting uh, because it's 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 the first, if not yeah, it's it's the only one that we know of, the only California grown agave spirit that we know of. In other words, you may find distillers who are um, making some sort of agave spirit, but it's usually with agave syrup that's, that's shipped up from Mexico um, or you know, tequila that's redistilled. And so what makes this stuff unique, for better or for worse, is that we're actually growing the agaves uh, in partnership with a ranch called La Paloma up in Goleta, harvesting them, roasting them, grinding, grinding them up, uh, fermenting the agave, distilling. And so it's, it's unique in that way and it's, it's exciting uh, to me anyway, because it's, you know, it's, it's a different deal. You know, what is, what is a agave teculana grown in, in Goleta taste like when it comes to distill? Um, and I think we're taking a pretty similar approach to, to some of the other spirits in that we're trying to get the truest expression of the agave that we can. Um, that's, that's the goal. Anyway. So if, if I'm not mistaken, it takes a, a while for agave to mature. Isn't, is that correct? So you've been in, so you, so talk about the, the, the planning process of this then, because this wasn't something that you just thought, oh, let's do this. And then you go and you find <laughs> an agave plant. Like you, this is, this no. seems like a major planning scheduling kind of thing for you to undertake. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's definitely some serendipity involved as well. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, so the, the guys from La Paloma came to us five or six years ago and said, Hey, we thought it'd be cool to plant some agaves. Would you guys ever be interested in making tequila or something? Uh, and it just so happened that we were very, very much interested in, <laughs> in, in making some agave spirit. And so, uh, you know, it, that was something we were excited to explore. And in, in the lead up to maturity of those plants, we also started getting our hands on, uh, you know, s small numbers of mature agaves, literally from people's yards or ranches, so that we could start learning, you know, what the heck we were doing. Um, and you know, get a, get a little bit of fermentation and distillation under our belt. Um, with these particular plants from the ranch, uh, we expected to have six, seven, eight plus years before we actually needed to go for it. Uh, but the these guys sent their stocks up, their quiotes, which tells you that they're at, their, at the end of their lives at around year five. Um, and so, whether we were ready for them or not, um, we you know it, it was it was time to go. No, and, uh, you know, what, what a, uh, you know, a tequila connoisseur will ask you is, well, what, what was the bricks, you know, or, you know, meaning was the sugar content high enough to really justify harvesting these plants? Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, even though they were pretty small and obviously they weren't 10 years old, the bricks was, was very high. Um, and so, yeah, for whatever reason, you know, we still don't know exactly, exactly why. Uh, that's, that's when they, they were ready to go. I never meant to be a uh, leader. Yeah. yeah. Those plants just were ready for their next call. <laughs> they, they were meant for the next life. Yeah. Now, do you guys do you guys cook them in the oven, or what's the process that you guys did for the agave to to get the juice out? The isn't it like pulque or something? Is like the first juice that comes up. Yeah. So yeah. So go ahead, Andrew. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in because because I gotta jump off in a little bit to uh, put some kiddos to bed, but um, we. Yeah, we didn't, as Henry was saying, we didn't quite have the, uh, the infrastructure ready um, that maybe we would have planned for had we had enough, you know, time um, and resources. And so what we ended up doing was with, with the first few batches, we actually use our still, which has, uses indirect steam heat, um, which means that there's a steam jacket, right? You, you, you supply the, the, the jacket with pressurized steam, which is like maybe 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and it heats up whatever's in there, but you're not actually injecting steam directly. So you're not really adding more and more dilution. So uh, what, what we did was put the agave piñas in the still, close it up, add a tiny bit of water to just keep the, keep enough water in there that it would be a, a you know, bathed in steam. And we steamed them and we started it out like maybe steaming for two days and now we've realized that you really don't need to steam them that long. And so it's a very clean process compared to some of the small batch artisanal like mezcal production that you might see where they're digging a pit and, you know, foraging wood and letting it burn down and throwing the agaves in there and, and covering them with burlap and dirt. I mean, 
you know, th that is a, a process that lends a ton of flavor and character and, and just uniqueness to, to different products coming out of, of Mexico. Um, but, and, and we, we definitely are excited to, to go down that road at some point. Um, but right now we, we, we're doing what we think is maybe one of the, the simplest and cleanest methods. Um, it, we were constrained. I mean, that was really the only infrastructure that we had access to at the time that we started. But we're now pretty happy, actually, with, with the, the course we've, we've taken because, as Henry said, what, what you're getting is just plant flavor. You're not getting smoke. You're not getting dirt. You're not getting really anything other than just the plant. And it's really cool to, to taste how much flavor there is coming just from the plant. And I think people who are, you know, uh, tequila um, aficionados, maybe, uh, they find it really enjoyable and interesting to taste what we're making um, for that reason. And if you go to uh, follow these guys on Instagram.com slash Ventura Spirits, there's actually some really cool photos um, showing some of the harvesting of the plants and that process you were talking about, Andrew, where I can see you're dropping a big old chunk of a um, plant into the kettle, into the, the still. Yep. Um, yeah, really some cool photos that allow you to see the journey I'm leading up to what is in the finished bottle. Well, let yeah, me, I think I think. Go ahead, Andrew. Oh, I, was, I, was, I was just gonna say, yeah, that that photo I think that you're referring to, it's actually a cool comparison. If you look at some earlier photos or later photos where uh, Henry and Anthony are out in the field harvesting, you'll see the the white color of the interior flesh of the agave pinas, the pinas, the, the core, the are yellow. Right, and so that that shows what it looks like after it's been cooked. Okay. Where the the, the inulins and the different starches and sugars have been broken down by heat and they then become available for fermentation. If you try and ferment a raw agave pina, you're not gonna get any yield. That's why it's cooked. Um, and so you can see the difference in color in that photo. Yeah, very cool, thank you. Well, Andrew, Sorry, Joe. We, no, we don't want, to, um, don't want to keep you longer than what you need to, but um, I think this is a good time to um, transition to from from all the spirits that you're doing and just a, a, a larger trend in in distillers um, across the country is um, making this sort of I don't know sideways or, or parallel jump into sanitizer since um, all of this kind of caught us off guard and now we can't get sanitizer anywhere but if you're lucky enough to have a local distiller in your or distillery in your neighborhood then um, then you have you may have some access to it of, of something that you weren't aware of. So, what was how did that um, thought process decision making go? And then how is it different from the alcohol that we're going that you know from from say the the brandies or the um, the gins that we were going to be drinking to begin with? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in and I'll start. And then Henry, you can finish it off. Um, Great. Basically, yeah, it's, it's, you know, we didn't, in terms of how we got involved or, or didn't get involved and ended up getting involved, you know, at, <laughs> at first, at, at, at first we were like, we we're like, no way, there's no way that Ventura Spirits um, has a significant role to play here. You know what I mean? Like there's just, it doesn't seem to be um, yeah, like, yeah, maybe there's some, some panic buying and some hoarding and, you know, people are afraid, but like, it can't actually be that Ventura Spirits can can make you know really uh, c contribute in, in a meaningful in a meaningful way uh right now by doing this um and then like you know there were news stories on cnn about about distilleries doing it and so we were getting calls because of that exposure and then we started getting calls like this the seriousness of the calls uh was increasing like every day not not just in terms of the the panic in people's voices but also like you know, we were getting calls from, you know, official government agencies asking if we if yes, we could help. Public service, um, you know, people that were saying, you know, what can you do for us? And you had large volume being requested. Is that right? Absolutely. I mean, there, you know, there's a, there's a, a scramble, right? There were people working for in in government um, who were trying to source it for, you know, the public purposes and and essential business, uh, you know, first responders and healthcare workers and stuff. There were um, there were some very sharp uh, you know brokers who realized the opportunity uh, unfolding and were calling us trying to buy up every drop of ethanol that we could produce um, and so we kind of slow played it at first and said okay well look 
if, if the government is, is calling us and, and needs it, like we should probably consider doing something, you know, we're not, we didn't think it was necessarily worth it just to, just, just so that people could, you know, have sanitizer in their homes while they were supposed to be locked down so they could feel better. Um, that, that didn't, that didn't seem to be a compelling reason to do it. Um, but, but yeah, then it, after enough days of people calling with, with a serious need, uh, you know, and I'll pass it over to Henry cause Henry and I, uh, <laughs> we had to talk each other into it um, we're, with the other, other partners as well. But yeah, Henry, how, how did that unfold, I guess? Yeah, I'll, so I'll, I mean, I, sorry, what were you no, saying? I was just going to say, I, I, I'm going to keep listening in, but I'm going to jump off. Um, so thank you guys. And uh, Henry, I'll, 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 uh, I'll keep listening to your answer. I'm anxious to hear it. <laughs> Andrew, thank you for being okay. yeah, Thanks for being on. <laughs> yeah, for sure, guys. Look forward to having, to raising a glass during a happy hour in person one of these days. That yeah. sounds great. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, so now that Andrew's put me on the spot, um, I, I, an another piece of that um, is that because of this situation and because of the shortage, um, the powers that be, um, the, the TTB, California ABC, the FDA, they all, in, in kind of a haphazard way, changed the rules. Um, so a, a distillery like ours with a license like ours, uh, you know, three months ago was not legally allowed to make uh, and sell hand sanitizer, which is obviously a non non beverage alcohol product, um, and so uh, that changed bec because of the need and because of the you know of, of what distilleries can do, um, and so we are now a believe it or not licensed with the FDA as an over the counter drug manufacturer for the purposes of of producing hand sanitizer. So that was another thing; it, w it wasn't even a legal possibility before, and and it then became one. Um, and yeah, so like, like Andrew said, it, it became clear that um, there was a real need. Um, you know, we were getting calls from local hospital system, that sort of stuff, and great companies and essential services, you know, people who were out and about and, and needed this stuff. Um, and so, we, yeah, we got, we got permitted and started trying to figure out uh, what we needed to do to make it happen. Um, and uh, we've used some, some alcohol that we've distilled ourselves and it makes a heck of a lot more to get uh, more sense to get neutral spirit if you can, uh, because, you know, the idea of, of, of uh, you know, foraging some inputs or, you know, picking some strawberries and fermenting them into wine and then distilling them uh, while a nice story is, is not efficient uh, in terms of time or, or money. Sounds like a labor um, of love that you'd rather not endeavor. Right, right. <laughs> uh, especially because, you know, this stuff by law must be denatured and it's obviously not potable. Um, and, you know, we're looking at this less as an extension of our brand. You know, we're not, you know, nothing wrong with doing this, but thus far is we've just been straight up using the World Health Organization FDA recommended recipe. It's alcohol, it's glycerin, and it's hydrogen peroxide. There's no, you know, cinnamon, clove, aloe, you know, <laughs> nothing like that. Just, I'm just, very, right. The, yeah, the no venture, the, the, it's, a, it's not the, 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 the gin of, of hand sanitizer. Uh, no, no, which, which is actually a great idea. And you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe we should be doing that, yeah. but, but to this point, we're, we're not. Well, and so basically, you know, our approach thus far as, and we're still figuring this all out, um, is we're donating a bunch, uh, you know, especially to those people or organizations that, might not be able to get it otherwise, like uh, uh, food food pantries, um, hospital systems, et cetera. Uh, we're selling some at wholesale, uh, freight companies, construction companies that are still working, that kind of deal. Um, and it, there, there's there been such such a demand from the consumer saying, hey, we, we'd like to buy this too. And so we're trying to figure out, okay, how does it make sense to do that? You know, I, we don't want 2000 people coming into the distillery to get hand sanitizer. It just doesn't make sense. And so uh, what we're trying now is to, to partner with a few retailers, sell it to them at a reasonable price, make sure that they're also reselling it at a, at a reasonable price. So just get it to people basically where they're already going um, is the idea. And to something you said um, a minute ago, Henry, as well, it sticks out to me in terms of not making it a major focus of your brand. And I think, because you know, again, when I came by today to pick up my bottles for um, tonight's enjoyment, you know, you had a bottle of hand sanitizer in my box. You know, Andrew mm -hmm. had it all prepped and ready to go. It was a beautiful uh, layout, but this was this is the bottle of hand sanitizer. It was prominent in the box, but what is not prominent is your logo. You're not trying to capitalize on the branding. You're focused on the fact that it's hand sanitizer. And I think for me that I appreciate that in terms of, you know, some of the humble roots, you know, you and Andrew were speaking about in terms of origin 
and not trying to capitalize it on in terms of a, uh, you know, financial gain. It really does seem to me as a consumer and a, a recipient of this bottle that it's about the community and the assistance. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's true. And, and look, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we're not selling nearly as much alcohol as we normally do. And depending on how things go, you know, being able to sell some of this stuff on the side could be important for us for a few months. Um, but, you know, we're, like you're saying, uh, we're, we want, you know, we want Ventura Spirits to be associated with, with spirits, you know, as much as possible. That's got to be the focus. <laughs> yeah. And just so what, what is hand sanitizer? You said hand sanitizer. Sorry, you said neutral spirit, which is what, like 100 Hundred percent alcohol, or yeah. So, so our our formula, which again is is just like the the basic uh, foolproof World Health Organization recommended formula. Is it's eighty percent? You know, in in the final final formula, it's eighty percent alcohol by volume. Okay. Um, so so yeah, eighty percent ethyl alcohol or ethanol. It's one hundred and sixty proof, right? For anybody who's counting. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It's 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 so it's one hundred and sixty proof. You know, if you're if you're talking beverage beverage alcohol. Um, and then just, uh, w there's a little bit of water in there and there's a little bit of glycerin uh, and a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Um, and, and that's it. Of course, there, there are a bunch of different ways to, to make sanitizer. And like I said, you can put all kinds of scents and, and other kind of skin care components in there. Um, yeah. I, I believe the, the, the baseline you see is 62%, uh, as, as the lowest allowable, you know, that, that's supposedly going to kill some germs. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a simple, at least the way we're doing it, it's a very simple process. And it's also, uh, it's not a gel the, the, way, the way that we're, we're making it. So it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a liquid, you know, kind of hand rub or, or hand wash that you can, is maybe best to use actually in a, in a spray bottle. You, know, you can spray it in your hand or, you know, spray down your steering wheel if you're a driver, you know, whatever it is. All right. I have, I have to ask, besides, besides the hydrogen peroxide, could you drink it? Uh, no. Uh, because there is a really nasty denaturant in there that I didn't mention. Um, it's not going to kill. It's not going to kill you, but it's a it's a very powerful bittering agent. Uh, oh. That's you know it's like one gram per however many hundreds of gallons. Uh, but it makes. It, Jason's reading it right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean though? A bittering agent. What is that? What's the intent? It, 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 it literally just makes it bitter. And I mean, I I've, I've tasted it. It's not. It's not like. It's not that. It's not poisonous. Uh, but it it is not it makes it it renders it undrinkable is that by design that's by design yeah, yes so that's that's by law and, and by design so in other words you know no nobody is gonna you know is gonna feel like they they want to drink drink <laughs> sorry i had to ask i just yeah. got somebody no, yeah, sure. I, I i appreciate that joby because i was going to ask the same question but then that but then i because what i was thinking what you were using was like the the bad stuff the, the 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 heads and the tails i thought that right. was the part that was being used as a but this is this is an actual potable clear or neutral spirit up until yeah. the point that you put all of this other stuff in that we're using to correct correct and and you can uh use use some of the the heads and tails and stuff although i think uh that there are potentially some issues with uh methanol and and other alcohols just in terms of skin contact i'm not sure it's it's necessarily like the the standard um, but yeah, and, and also depending on, you know, our setup, we, we've got a, a basic, um, hybrid pot still, uh, which, which is, um, a really nice utility player and can be used to make a lot of different spirits, uh, you know, brandies, whiskeys, gin, also vodka, but it's a, a bear. I mean, we, we, we make vodka on it, but you know, you're, you're putting stuff, you're, you're putting your vodka through it about seven times to get up to the level of neutrality that's required. Just a long way of saying we're not set up to make neutral spirit at scale. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, a different operation could be. And, and for those guys, um, you know, it's a lot easier to say, yeah, you know, send me, you know, send me a thousand kegs or whatever. And, you know, maybe we might do a little bit of that as well. It's just not the most efficient way for us to do it. Well, but, you know, just at its core, though, it's going to satisfy the, the need and it's going to cover the gap. I will tell you, Curtis and Joby, you know, there's enough of a reflection of the hydrogen peroxide, though, even without the bittering agent, with even yeah, without, I I'm not gonna. I wouldn't attempt it. I, I, um, again, you know, so many people. Although Henry, you mentioned not wanting to really cater to the general consumer in terms of just providing that the feel of safety and the comfort, just that little security blanket at home. Yep. It, this does still provide that. You know, 
you go to Target, you go to any big box store right now, there's still toilet paper missing from the shelves, still paper towels, still cleaning agents. You know, I couldn't get any damn uh, scrubbing bubbles for Christ's sake. It's yeah. I was almost seven weeks in and I couldn't get scrubbing bubbles for my shower. But yep. you know, people do feel like, hey, I've got my hand sanitizer. If I cross paths with someone, I can throw this on my hands real yeah. quick, in and out of the car. I've got my first line of defense. Yep. And, you know, being here in Ventura, we're clamoring local a lot. It's nice to see that name right on the bottle, even though it's not prominent, even though you're not trying to, to boast and really blare it out to the community, it feels right. I, I appreciate that. I really do. And, and to be honest, it's been a long process of us being like, wait, what are we doing? How should we be doing this? You know, where should it be going? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we're still, you know, still figuring that out. But I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I, I still do tell people, you know, the best thing you can do is, is wash your hands with soap. And, and that's true. So, you know, if, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're in your house, you know, hand sanitizer shouldn't be your, your go-to. But we, we, all, we all need to be out and about for some reason, you know, even if it's just to get, get food or if you're, you know, working in some sort of essential service or whatever it is. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely nice to have around, that's for sure. And, and why not support Ventura Spirits while you're sanitizing your hands, right? Why not? With that, we got to, Curtis, you know, you're typically the guy to say something like this, but we've got a handful of minutes left in this segment. People have their comfort now. And in our routine, we've got our hand sanitizer. What's the next iteration, do you think, Henry, for Ventura Spirits? Did you have any, like, ex alcohol expressions or any unique um, ingredients you were targeting and thinking about prior to this big shelter in place and shut down with COVID-19 that maybe you'll want to revisit? What is, how do you come out of this? What's your next evolution, potentially? I think now it's got to be that gin-scented hand sanitizer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, no. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah, there are a couple of things that coming down the pike. Um, so there, there are definitely going to be more batches of the, the Paloma, of the Agave Spirit, which is one that's always fun. Uh, uh, so we're using Agave Tequilana, which is uh, Blue Weber, the, the same type of um, agave that's, that's, made, that's used for all tequila, um, for, for everything we've made so far. But there, there are many, many other varieties, some of which are actually probably better suited to grow here in our region. Um, one of those is Agave Americana, which is one of those, they're the big kind of green, green gray guys that you see just mm -hmm. all over the place and, and just need zero water to thrive. Like, you know, they can just right. lay in the dirt, you know, like pulled out of the soil and then a year later you can throw them back in the ground and they'll, they'll start going. Um, anyway, we've done a few small batches uh, with, with Agave Americana and it is, I mean, Andrew was talking about how we're really getting the, the plant coming through. It is such a huge departure from agave tequilana, just an entirely different character. And that's, that's really interesting to us. Um, so maybe, maybe look for yeah. something like that. There are, there are a few other varieties as well um, we're looking at. Um, that, that, sounds, that sounds delicious. And, and yeah. just to go back to, I think Andrew was talking about how with the, the mezcal and you bury it and you get all these. And, it's, and he was talking about how it, was, it builds a lot of character. And I'm like, I don't want, any of that character because one of the, like, I, I have a really um, low threshold for any smoke mm. or any things and so um, peaty scotches I can't do peat beers absolutely not because it all tastes like band-aids to me mm. and then and and like the um, the mezcals I can't do that so when he was saying this is clean and this is all steamed I'm this is it's my boat right there all right we got to get you a bottle I'm yeah. looking forward to that yeah. my neighbor has a bunch of those uh Agaves that you're talking about, I'm going to go over there and send them over to you. Nice. Oh, and, and uh, if I have one more minute, another thing oh, yeah. we're, we've got in the works is, uh, so we, we, we do a bunch of uh, contract distilling, at least in, in normal times. So, you know, somebody will come to us and say, hey, I want to make XYZ kind of vodka. Can you help us do this? Or can you help us formulate this uh, liqueur or whatever it is? Um, and, and one of the things we've been doing a, a good bit of is, is RTD cocktails ready to drink, meaning, you know, canned cocktails um, of, of various types. Um, and, but what, what we've never done is make one, you know, for ourselves. Um, and so we make this stuff called Amaro Angelino, um, which actually I have a bottle of right here. This um, is it's, it's, it's um, <laughs> this stuff, um, which is, you know, Amaro is a, is a big umbrella category for, a, you know, a bunch of different types of Italian liqueurs, uh, but they're always going to be herbal and they're always going to be sweet. 
you know, so Aperol is, is a type of Amaro, uh, Campari is a type of Amaro, Fernet, uh, et cetera. Um, and so th this, is, this is ours. Um, um, and so anyway, it makes a great spritz, you know, the same way you'd make an Aperol spritz, but it's got its own thing going. Um, and uh, so we're gonna come to market with an, with an Angelino spritz. Um, so, you know, a canned um, Amaro, Amaro cocktail. Well, Andrew, Andrew was telling me earlier about that. He um, graced me with a bottle. I want to thank you guys for your generosity. Oh, yeah. Again, just to remind everyone listening, go to VenturaSpirits.com. There's a link to shop. You can order online, pick up at the distillery. But what's the ratio again for the, the Amaro to sparkling water? How, how are we making the spritz at home until your canned version comes out? Oh, man. I, I wish Andrew were here to answer that. I mean, uh, I, I, I do about... <laughs> that much. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, 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 a couple, a, a couple fingers, you know, two, two, three fingers of of Amaro, um, and you know, top, top it up with your seltzer, with your soda. You know, maybe, maybe a little orange zest or some grapefruit in a, sh in a short glass, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's for a tall glass. That's for a tall okay. Glass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the, on the RTD uh, thing, I have to ask selfishly: Will there be a gin and tonic? We'll see. We'll see. For now, you know, this is our this is our first little little baby step, nice. um, and we'll we'll see what makes sense uh, from there. Joby, I am still my mind continues to go to the keg room right now, and all those IPAs that are sitting around at Barrel House One Hundred and One. There, I can envision a Barrel House One Hundred and One blended distilled IPA. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna distill the IPA, we gotta go whiskey. Oh, oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it, and we'll make it smoky just so. Curtis. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Bottle ready uh, beer makes makes a really interesting, you know, both white and, and aged whiskey for sure. And on the on the aged thing, um, the Paloma, the tequila, any any of that sitting in barrels, or is it just meant to be? A Not bottle? yet. I mean, and it, that kind of goes back to at least for now, as we're getting into it, just wanting it to be all about the plant, uh, but. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna we're gonna start looking at aged expressions, but not yet. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that seems like a good spot for us to take a break here. Um, I've been out of a beer for, with about what 10, 15 minutes, so it seems like I oh, need man. to get a I need to get a refresher here. So, um, just a reminder: you need to go to VenturaSpirits.com to check it out. I was looking there um, off and on as we've been talking, and there's um, a cocktails. Henry, those are um, those are the recipes. Is that right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And, so and actually, I mean, we are working on putting together some little cocktail kits um, so that you, you can kind of order everything you need to oh, nice. to, to, shelter, to drink in place, shelter in right. place. Um, <laughs> drink in place. I like the new I like the new nomenclature definitely. All right, so check that out so that um, if you if you happen to have um, Ventura Spirits sitting in your um, cupboard and you're looking, what do I need? What what do I have? What can I make? There's a whole um, whole page dedicated to those ideas. Um, and then if you don't, then just take check it out because it's also good stuff as well. Um, good recipe. So we'll take a break here real quick. We'll come back uh, with refresh for last call. Henry, thank you so much. Thanks, for Henry, uh, hey, thanks thank so much for having me, guys. Thanks a lot. Really, really right. appreciate it. Right, take, take care. care. While we're taking a break, go ahead and get yourself a refreshed beverage. All right, welcome back to Happy Hour. We are in our last call right now. We've got refreshed drinks. I, um, Joby, what did you end up? You're just sniffing gin. I'm just sniffing gin because I don't, have any, I don't have any ice. And Sounds stuff like something you should be doing in high school. <laughs> What base did you get to? Oh, I was sniffing gin. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't even know I what that means. I don't know what that means, but it sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah, it oh, sucks okay. because yeah. I have some really good tonic too. But uh, anyway, Woo. you need some ice. I, that is something I don't have. That's some first world problems right there. And Jason, you've got some ice though. Yeah, Jason. I, <laughs> ice in my I, uh, I went with the limoncello. I thought I needed a nice, refreshing closure. Um, and we were talking, Joby. You were recommending what the type of person I may end up to be. What was no, I that? said if you're if you want to morph into an old Italian man and just drink limoncello all day, especially after dinner, and just talk about everything that just complain about everything and drink your limoncello. Well, I, I feel like you would morph into that. That's I'm not Italian by roots, but I could see myself in that role pretty easily. Um, and it reminded me, as you said, old, you know, cranky. 
<laughs> I was the, I was heading over. Uh, where was I going? Oh, it was yesterday morning. I was getting ready to go over and see my son. I started to turn from Santa Clara onto um, I think it's Chestnut to go past the Ventura Theater, and you know the streets these days are super empty. Yeah. And I made the mistake of cutting the corner a little too close. I almost came head to head with our old buddy and a regular patron of Barrel House 101, Gregorio. I, and it was that moment where I'm like, oh shit, and I turned the wheel. And then I looked and saw who it was. And I'm like, why didn't I make an obscene gesture? Why didn't I get his attention? Uh, missed that guy. This, this is one of those uh, moments where you think about the regulars and the people that really influence your restaurant life. Yeah. And Gregorio used to be such a pain in the ass, but so enjoyable to talk to in the restaurant. I don't know if he would describe himself as a salty old Italian man, but I think that fits him. I think he's, he might actually be Greek or Armenian, but I'll, I'll put him as an Italian man. Right. It's all right. Well, one of my, um, one of my favorite memories from um, Italy, it was in 2003, and I was, with, I was there with my wife's family. And... Um, her my father-in-law jerry and i we were just sitting we were in montalcino and we're in this little tiny courtyard um plaza piazza and and um the little benches and there's shade and it's like 100 degrees in these these wine mountain country of tuscany and um just these old guys in um in chinos um sh uh, you know these high polished italian shoes and then um wife beaters or just like these super pitted out white t-shirts right just sitting there and, and just looking at everyone so jerry and i sat in on a bench across from them crossed our legs and just sat and crossed our arms and just was looking at people too as they went walking by because that's they they were drinking i don't know i'm trying to think of what they were probably grappa or something right it would something potent Get that fire in a minute right that fire water those, those, those old dudes were not drinking limoncello. <laughs> they should be drinking this limoncello because just like the strawberry brandy, the, the nose on this is like fresh lemon zest. It's vibrant. Yes. And it's, this is really nice. Those guys at Ventura Spirits, Henry, Andrew, and James, their, their crew, they're doing a really nice job with the quality in these products. So I want to give, uh, before we close, limoncello reminds me of, an old friend, James, and Ventura Limoncello, way ahead of its time. Oh, wow, yeah. And his blood orange cello mm -hmm. yeah, is absolutely one of my favorite things. In fact, I used to make a uh, blood orange, uh, blood, wow, <laughs> got some noise going on. Um, I know. Oh, Joby's place. Uh, what's it called? I, I used to love to make a old fashioned with this blood orange, mm -hmm. blood orange old fashioned. And so we do whiskey. Actually, Breaker Bourbon and uh, Blood Orange Cello. So you know, um, he was another person I think I met when we got together at the Surf Brewing uh, live opening, um, their grand opening, Joby. That he was, you know, he was um, he was instrumental in getting the the tasting room laws changed in California, and it was it's so it's sad that. That limoncello, Ventura limoncello, just didn't, couldn't make it through that. Yeah, so I, he was, in, he was, he was instrumental, but he didn't get to see it play out. Mm -hmm. So he didn't get to see right. the, the full thing. So. James, if you're out there, we miss you. Yeah, and based on our conversations with him, it was a hard process. You know, it's it's hard to get beat up by regulation for you know, year after year trying to be that instrument of change, but. But well, I think it, it goes up was delicious. Yeah. Say. Yeah. And that, I mean, that goes back. That's that goes back to the what we were talking um, just a little bit ago was when when Ventura Spirits was um, when they could put booze in barrels and it didn't count against their because there's, a, you know, the whiskey lobby, you yeah. know, and that's and that was the, the state of California was run by the wine industry and they didn't want people being able to go and get booze, you know, so it was all written against that. And look where we are now on that note. You can get, you can get go to <laughs> curbside pickup for cocktails. <laughs> With some saran wrap over the top of it for price. Look, look where we are now. But I go big old. We got a couple of minutes. We didn't mention Joby, you threw out one of the, like the original, not the exact original, because you would have a, you'd beg to differ 
But in terms of Beer Fest and Ventura, we are still going to have an iteration of Serpent Suds coming up down the pipe. Yeah, that was cool. I saw um, I, I saw their post. It's Serpent Suds. Look it up. SerpentSuds.com. Serpent Suds Beer Fest. It might be the same. Wrong. But the idea is that you pay a price and you get beer from several breweries delivered to your house. And I don't know. I thought this might be a good show for us to, to maybe participate. And uh, Oh, yeah. I think it'd be awesome. It's May 25th. And like you said, go to surfbeerfest.com. Yeah. 50 bucks gets you 12 breweries. To your 12 brewery. breweries delivered to your house, right? Yeah. That's not and, then you, and then you, you sign up. I, I assume it's a Facebook Live or a, a Zoom type of thing. And you uh, taste through the beers together, I guess. If you can make it. If you can wait that long. We're going to have live music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Curtis, uh, is it okay to say about the uh, your your judging is going forward as well, right? Well, it's still it's it, 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 it's yeah it's not um, it nothing is set yet, but it would be something similar to that. You know, there's just there's so many um, um, opportunities right now to do something really interesting, and I think like that Serpent Suds having um, having beer sent to your home, you know if the the coordination is um, just being a part of a team that's trying to put something together like that, trying yeah. to get all of the beers yeah, no, in one a, spot, and then and then making sure that they're handled safely by everyone, and then making sure that everyone is comfortable. Like my only thing would be is who's who you know where is the is this all going into a warehouse where it's how you know where it's being staffed by fifteen year olds filling up crates, you know, I, you know, whatever it happens to be that you, there's I mean, a bunch there's of, a bottle, if there's a bottle missing, I mean, it's a, you never right. know. Well, I think well, what, I'm, uh, I'm just thinking of, of the, of the sanitizing kinds of things that have to be, you know, I mean, the people right back in these have to be almost in full hazmat suits for people to be, well, maybe for me to be okay yeah. with it. <laughs> You've got a different tolerance and threshold, <laughs> but what we're talking about too, um, for those of you who are feeling a little obscure about the, judging Curtis is describing has to do with the Costa Pacifica wine food and brew festival it happens every summer out here in uh, Ventura County. One of the biggest fundraisers for Costa Pacifica angels. Um, they've been doing it for decades and it's a major part of what keeps that operation running. Um, so we're going to miss out on that festival in terms of physical appearance. And the it's one of our favorite, I think the three of us favorite. Yeah, that, year, so. that festival cannot be beat. loads of great breweries, restaurants, who's who of Ventura County providing to a great cause. So uh, if, if that's a festival you normally love to attend as well, I'd encourage you to go um, find Costa Pacifica and find a way to help them out and donate anyway, because right. they're going to miss out. It's going to be, you know, that's one thing that we haven't talked about and I don't want to close on a, a great cloud, but at the same time, there's a lot of great events in Ventura County that benefit causes and benefit charities that um, make a difference in our community. And we're going to be missing out on that this year. So please find a way to still, contribute to your community if you can. Absolutely, right. Yeah, Casa Pacifica they, is actually, that's their 25th anniversary this year. So there was a bunch of stuff that they've been planning for a long time and and it was heartbreaking for them. But we're still, we, you know, the, the beer competition side of it, we're still looking at um, trying to do something similar to this is virtual beer tasting and beer competition, just to bring people together, you know, just to say, hey, things are still, this is this is weird, but we can do it this year. You know, next year we should be back out in in the quad. And we'll see what happens. You know, here on channel, it's here, it's it's out here on uh, TSU it's Channel. Not, not biggest sense for Curtis. He's the luckiest one. He just gets to walk right home. He right. gets to walk over. But you know, there's nothing like a, a bro hug, a high five, or an elbow bump. But I tell you, Curtis and Joby, this is the most I've seen you guys in, in a long time because of our <laughs> lives. So you know. Doing it virtually still is a great substitute, it not perfect, but it does get us together, and we're all still enjoying it class. So, cheers to you guys! Yeah, cheers, cheers. All, all right. right, all right, fellas. It's perfect. Another Monday in the books. Another Monday. It's been a great week, Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking forward to Tuesday week. <laughs> Let's see what we can. Let's see how long tomorrow can last. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Great show. Great All right. show. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks for watching and listening. Make sure for those of you who are um, 
brand new to the show, you can check us out on Facebook. We are streaming on Facebook Live. I don't know if you can find it anywhere, but I do see that we're streaming there. Yeah, um, also find us on Instagram. Chris. YouTube is YouTube as well. Yeah, um, we're, the think? next step is trying to figure out Instagram because we're old farts. Well, I am. It's and the then, Instagram. You gotta find us on the Instagram. The Instagram, but I'm looking to get us on the Tic Tac, and then we can go from there. <laughs> it's a Tic Tac. No, 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 Tic Tac. <laughs> also, I had a request today from someone um, who does not subscribe to some of these platforms to view old shows. And at one point, we were linked in with the podcast uh, service. No, so they're, they're still on, actually. You can find, I believe you can find old podcasts. Not video, but audio. Right. So if I'll you, try to share them because I... I I was able to see some or hear some. So, yeah, so they are, it's weird looking for those on iTunes. You can find them um, as you roll through. Um, every once in a while, I can find them on my phone or my feed, but then when I search for them, I can't find it. However, you can always go to hopheadset.com and then click the happy hour button tab at the top of the page. All of our shows are there. So um, in audio and video formats, links to all of the videos, it's all there. Take a look at it and you don't have to subscribe to youtube so whoever's giving you i don't subscribe to that platform come on well they are older democrats <laughs> they just wanted their podcast service where they could find it in their i way. i know and i've been and I, 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 i'll share that with you i'll try to find it i agree and i've been actually i've been it's something that i've been trying to figure out how to get it back on because the um, subscription because you didn't because we didn't upload for three years. Then they just like okay, it's a dead podcast, and then canceled. That, that long? Yeah. Definitely, yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. So we'll get it back up there. Hang with us. Hang tight. For now, watch us on YouTube. We love you, five listeners. Woo! <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you next right. week. Have a good yeah. night. Right. Talk to y'all soon. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Happy Hour. We'll be back next week with more questionable content, great guests, and drinks all around. Happy